Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the February 24th, 2022 work session of the Penfield Planning Board. Let's begin the meeting with a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Slightly different uh, layout tonight. Hopefully this provides a better, more uh, effective uh, collaboration and work session. Lori, would you uh, please call the roll? Sure. Hetsky? Hetsky here. Burton? Burton here. Knauer? Knauer here. Tidings? Tidings here. Sangster? Sangster here. Weissar? Weissar here. O'Connor? O'Connor here. Dubrock? Dubrock here. Gray here. Okay. We don't have minutes yet. Almost done, but not quite. <laughs> so let's move on to uh, our agenda items. Doug, you want to All right. start off going through the tabled <clears throat> applications? Yes, our first tabled application is the pen, uh, Pathstone Mixed Use Development. Uh, We've had a brief conversation with the applicant. We know they're working on revised materials, but we don't have anything new to share with you guys tonight. So no actions required by the board. Okay. All right. Uh, for tabled application number two, the arbors at Penfield. Um, since our last meeting, um, staff met with the applicants at the project review committee meeting, um, which is made up of staff uh, to provide some technical expertise. Um, coming out of that conversation with them, we had some discussions regarding the open, open space. So Catherine, can I have you bring up the open space map and table? Uh, just prior to our last meeting, they provided, the applicant provided a map highlighting the open space areas on the property or on their project um, and provided a breakdown in the form of a, a table of the uh, <coughs> open space areas, um, both within the, the development overall, but as well as within the phase one, you know, what they're here for approvals for. Um, Looking at you know what they've provided, um, they are um, generally in keeping with or exceeding the recommendations put forth within the mixed use manual in Table 6.1.5, um, providing uh, a fair amount of, of public open space within the Zone A and the Zone B. Um, future phases, uh, the numbers do reduce, so it'll be based on the development as they're showing it. It's very heavy. Um, open space in this early phase one um, because it does encompass a lot of the out, outer lying areas. Um, the future yeah, development areas are going to be um, centered around um, sort of the apartment building there um, on I think what they're calling lot so. two or lot three, which is on the east side of that property. Um, and then uh, Zone C, which doesn't have a specific recommendation, they're providing a substantial amount in that area um, just because of the low density requirements within the Zone C. Um, another discussion point, and it's something that the board has, has been going back and forth on, um, was um, how they are going to provide this open space and, and keep it open for the public um, in meeting with the applicant, um, we discussed it with them and they were open to the idea of doing agreements um, in the form of, of an easement or something fileable with the county clerk um, to go through and um, you know memorialize the public open space areas as being um, dedicated to the public and memorializing the maintenance responsibilities of the open space areas through um, a mechanism that the town commonly uses as a property maintenance agreement, which will outline, um, you know, who is responsible for snow management, um, you know, hours it's open, lighting, um, things like that. Um, it's something we've commonly required in, in our larger commercial developments or in any of our commercial developments um, to, to outline those. Um, so 
So uh, staff will. <clears throat> so essentially, the open space here is kind of a tacit, if that's the right word, allowance of public access, not necessarily active seeking public access yes it'll be mostly and I could see passive. that um, you know there's a couple areas like that triangle pocket park there there's the uh, where that little loop around is on the not that one uh, head south um, oh stop yeah right there so um, you know because that's closer to sort of the and that, downtown that is, area and that area they they really need to remove from their open space a lot or showing on that map they need to remove that area there are buildings <laughs> proposed there in a future phase um so that's know, not so, proposed to be yeah and part of part of their calculation they included the vertical mixed use buildings in their um calculation towards at least partial of their calculation towards open space Thankfully, in their Doug, table, yes. That lot two area is not a building. That's a gazebo. Oh yes, no. Sorry, that that yes. Yeah, sorry, that lot area. But the the areas around it. Yeah, those are buildings. Those are buildings, yeah. and on sure. the north side are buildings. And then on the other side, you got the more of the commercial. <clears throat> yeah, those are the very uh, mixed That's a sort of street of shops. Uh, right, but Main well, Street type mm -hmm. area. So that lot two with the gazebo is kind of a little. Yes. Pocket park. Little pocket park. You're saying really. None of those areas should be pochade green. Yes, that is correct. Um, did you did you point that out to that them? is that is a comment that we will be making in the, our next PRC memo um, for revision. None of them should be what. So the the areas that with the buildings Color. in it shouldn't be pochade. shouldn't be shaded. Well, um, we asked for clarification on that because they showed it shaded, but I believe they thought that the buildings itself were not included in the calculation. So. That was a point of clarification that they need to come back with. Yes, because the, the manual specifically says buildings cannot be used or cannot be shown as being so this, part of the public open So space. these tables that they provided us with, we can disregard? Uh, Not no, so they actually, no, did, the, they actually did pull out the, the building buildings. square footage, I think, in the table. Yeah, can you pull it back can up? You go yeah, back so, yeah. so, so they do look. have the acreages excluding the buildings. Um, you know, truthfully, the, the buildings, the ground floor area of the buildings was not substantial to take away from it. Uh, you know, it's within a couple percent each, but they did include in the tables the areas excluding the buildings. Has that been verified by anybody? Uh, well, again, we're waiting for their confirmation on that. So we've asked the question. They need to come back and say, we're good with these. So, I mean, essentially, if you look at that top section, subsection, development zone A, phase one, Mm -hmm. Phase one totals at 5.32 acres. 38% of the 5.32 acres is covered by buildings, is what they're saying in this table. Uh, well, that, that is the open space, including the buildings that are within that area. Um, we are. Areas excluding the buildings. So then. So the areas. So actually, the buildings only take up. Uh, if you got <coughs> point three three percent point yeah. f uh, four point nine two out of five point three two right yeah so, so point, about four point four acres is correct. a building space is that that's the way we should read that yeah <coughs> yes yeah so the vertical mixed I use the buildings are, are they, they don't have quite as large a footprint as some of the other. If, when you get down into the, the, the zone B, the, the numbers are a little bit more substantial and different. That's less than 20. I mean, if it's 0.4 acres of buildings there, there's it's about 18,000 square feet of floor space. I think they're at roughly uh, ground 14, level. I think they're at 14,400, right. if I remember. Is their their GFA is so fourteen thousand four hundred? So okay. four times four is sixteen. So it'd be it'd be closer to seventeen thousand square feet. Right. <coughs> okay. Yeah, they may have included walkways and. Uh, the, the the buildings do have a connection. Yeah, the covered walkways. Yeah, the, 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 the covered the areas. They may be breezeway and the, the breezeways. Yes. 
Okay. Everybody understand that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think what I'm hearing is we're going to get another set of documents that we can more fully scrutinize. Well, it might not necessarily yeah. be another set of documents. It might just be confirmation that the, these numbers are good. Well, I think the the mapping showing those green areas needs to be resubmitted. That's just the graphical <coughs> area of having the building removed, but the building might not actually be included in the calculation. Yeah, fair enough. Right, so the looking at the green on the map, you need to imagine the buildings coming out of that green. Yeah. And really the only area they did include the buildings in that, that green area is that vertical mixed use area. You know, the rest of the areas they did a very good job of specifically mm. excluding areas um, that were not building and even excluding areas that the manual would consider semi-private <coughs> open space. Um, <coughs> so if you look around some of the townhomes, they don't include all the way up to the, the front of the buildings. They, they do stop it at the, where the, multi, the other side of the multi-use trail. Um, so they did exclude the sort of semi-private areas, um, which I did appreciate. That that's not something that every uh, group has looked at doing or, or shown ac accurately. They've, um, so it is, I, I do. I'm not so sure problem. about that. If you look at, so if you look at the chart, like those buildings are in area five. Mm -hmm. What buildings are you talking about? The, the ones that are grayed out. Where else are there buildings? Are there buildings in? So they call that area, yeah, area five in area three. Down on the bottom right there, okay. Okay, five and three. But they include percentages with the buildings and without the buildings. Um, it's the only area where they include those percentages. The rest of them are all excluding. Yeah, but like area two, they've got. Can you pull down? I think uh, it looks just confusing to me. I the, the chart, it, it takes a second to get the chart. Areas two, three, and five are the ones that include buildings in them. Um, okay. Two, two area three, 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 three. The top left and five, five on the bottom. Area three, and area two. Yeah, it's kind of hard to yeah. see oh, that. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the text uh, overlaid on white. top of the drawing can be that a little sense. difficult to read. Yeah, yeah, first I couldn't see it at all. Yeah, and then you see it. And you can't get rid of it. Jeez. It's like one of those songs that you hear. You know, it's with you all day. Is it just at a bad angle or is it? No, no, I can see it now. Oh. Whereas in prior meetings, I usually can't see any of that stuff. <laughs> So Jim, you're asking for them to go through and go with the mouse and like <coughs> do all the shapes around it and take it out. Yeah, just I mean, you make know, it clearer. May, you know, yeah. maybe maybe the town understands better what what they're trying to convey, but maybe the public wouldn't, it, right? It, unless they you know saw it better graphically represented. Uh, that's what we can ask for. Um, so we'll ask for, for greater <coughs> clarification on that map and uh, revision. Okay. Um, another one of the other items that was provided was a uh, fire apparatus map. Uh, one of the comments that staff had in, included in our discussion with them uh, was in their initial submission, they showed um, 26 foot wide um, roadways throughout the entire development. Um, including even uh, a lot of the alley or access roads where it was, it was the garages um, for the, the townhome units. Um, so we had, had asked them and had some discussion with them on the potential for reducing road widths within those areas. It'll reduce uh, impervious space, which we're always happy about, um, provide narrower roads, which, um, you know, is something we would also like to see. Um, you know, we don't, we're not necessarily in support of unnecessary road widths. Um, so the way they have shown it on this diagram is anything in blue um, is being reduced from 26 to 20 feet wide. Um, and anything in the purple is 26 feet. 
the intention was to leave um, at least one face on any building greater than 30 feet in height and um, access around hydrants at the 26 foot width um, for, for fire access and for <coughs> ladder trucks, but the other roads could be reduced down. Um, we have gone through this with the town's fire marshal. Um, he is comfortable with the, um, the proposed road widths as, as they're showing them here. Um, certainly for phase one, um, he said he, he would have to reserve comment on future phases um, until we have sufficient detail uh, when those are submitted to, to go through them. But at least with phase one, he is comfortable with the road widths as they have proposed them. Um, Okay. You guys good with that? Yep. Yeah. Jim, you're the fire fireman. Let him finish his notes. The fireman too? Well, he's the I, I, one familiar yeah, with I all the fire codes and stuff. You know. Good man. <laughs> My wife starts fires, I put them up. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to touch that one. I know. I'm smart. <laughs> So, staff is good with this. Yes. Solution. Yes. Um, yeah, they were proposing roads around and all the other stuff that was five feet wider than our standard road. So, we didn't see necessary. the need for it and commented on can we make these roads narrower? So, right. Now they're within at least what a town standard road is. Could that extra five feet have been used as a bike lane, something like that? You know, would that make sense? I mean, potentially, sure. I think I'd rather have the green space than. Uh, yeah, I too. I think the green space would be better myself. Weren't they talking about the bikes and? The, Sidewalk or something else. Well, the multi use trail is wide enough it could support right. recreational cyclists, which is what we would, the, mm -hmm. the type of folks okay. we would expect to be. Oh, right, but you're, trail. I mean, you're going to have a lot of different types of people living in here, mm -hmm. and some people will want to ride their bikes not just on the multi use trail, but want to ride, you know, maybe from home to trail. grab a cup of coffee or something. And. You know, do I think that it justifies a separate lane? <clears throat> Probably not. You know, I mean, uh, it's a, essentially a residential development in a large part of it. So you're not going to have 441 or, you know, site like traffic on there. And they are proposing, and they do show um, bicycle lanes coming in off of 250 and Atlantic Avenue um, and running down that main, what will be the publicly dedicated road portion, mm -hmm. um, you know, coming in off the, the west side on Atlantic Avenue and then going down to 250. So those areas will have uh, bike lanes leading up and into the mixed use area. Um, the side roads, they don't show, show bike lanes, uh, but those are closer to what we would consider a traditional residential street. Um, you know, I could see if we if the board was interested in you know if they want to extend it. Catherine, can you zoom back out? Um, if you want to like extend bike lanes along sort of that main east-west arterial leading up to uh, what they call the mushroom park or the mushroom-shaped park there at the end, um, you know, as that main arterial having a bike lane and then. <coughs> reducing off of that as you get to more into the sort of neighborhood streets um, off of it um, or providing some loop around uh, bike lane. Um, but you're also looking at you know, maybe scooters. Yeah. Uh, you know, potentially a number of different golf carts even. Will the primary roadways here be dedicated? Uh, so the only portion of road that they are proposing to be dedicated is the road coming off of Atlantic Avenue up to the community center and then heading south back down to 250. So oh, that main nice. road and then down to there. You yeah. gotta get your directions right. 
Sorry, east. <laughs> east <laughs> off of, or north off Atlantic. And then north off of Atlantic, Bridge east to 250. To 250. And are, it is. It are, takes me a long it's time scooters, to get used to this. Are stuff scooters too, so. uh, licensed motor vehicles? Are they permitted on? Uh, uh, that's a good question. Well, I guess that's. Uh, yeah. That's what question. I want to kind of discuss with this stuff. If we're narrowing, I think they're treated some of the drugs, same way as bicycles, we, unless they can exceed a certain speed. But I don't you know, think any of them exceed the. Do you Do you know that, Peter? I don't think you can drive a golf cart on the. No. Road, but I don't know about scooters. You can in the city, right? Mini bikes, also ATVs, all that no, stuff, right? No. Well, you're not supposed to, but they don't enforce it. <laughs> so you can't. Um, so, golf cart, even golf carts, I think, have to be, if they're of a certain power, they have to be licensed with a plate. Uh, if they're of a slower speed, you can put, they have a, especially a uh, like a low speed vehicle triangle you're supposed to have on it to indicate that you're a slow moving vehicle. But I, I don't know how much I'd foresee golf carts within the development. No. You remember? Uh, but no, you, scooters is something. They don't make it as like Back in the 40s when you were uh, stay away from driving it. around a patrol car. Back <laughs> 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 in the 70s. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the potential of scooters is something we could bring up with the applicant. You know, I don't well, know. Well, I'm th I, there, scooters, there. golf carts, bikes. I mean, the, we're looking right mixed use, multimodal transportation, not exactly. just cars, not exactly. just walks. Mm -hmm. Well, and you were but, talking about, you know, uh, a bike lane. I mean, we're we're designing bike lanes everywhere today. Yeah. Um, in fact, the, there are a lot of parts in the country where there's specific funding for to widen arterials to provide dedicated bike lanes, colored bike lanes with bicycle emblems, you know, painted into the pavement. And, um, you know, it's one of the things that we promote in the mixed use manual. Yeah. Um, I think on the, I, I don't know if it's necessary on, on, on the side streets. Mm-hmm. I'm not 100% convinced that it's necessary on the main arterial, you know, let's say the north-south street and the east-west main street, but definitely something that we should seriously consider. Maybe we should have it on those two parts, mm -hmm. that extra five feet, or, you know. Well, that makes a lot uh, of sense to me. Yes, whether it's it a, you know, considered a bike lane or a cart lane or, you know, some other alternative transportation alternative lane. Alternative transportation lane. Well, and that's what the they're called. ATL. Yeah. That's what they got right now. <laughs> that's what so they have. A, so they do That's show, what they currently yeah. have on those two streets. Yeah. yeah. So. Oh, okay. They do have it. Yeah. 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 On the, all, okay. Yeah. They have it on yeah. the L shape or whatever you want to call it. Shape. Screen. I could go up and. <clears throat> yeah. So that L shape. <clears throat> Those sections they do show uh, dedicated bike lanes in on each side of the road uh, in each direction. Do, where do we? I mean, maybe this is a challenge that I have. You know, looking at these plans on my computer screen, mm -hmm. it's it is challenging to it, it might get not be into on that detail range. on mm -hmm. projects like this, especially with. Uh, I mean, if I open it up on the Google Drive, it only zooms in so far. It's, um, yeah, you need to download the files yeah. and use a different PDF yep. tool. But even then, you're only looking at a small section. That said, I'm not advocating we get full <coughs> drawing space. I'm not yeah, advocating that. There's don't, right there. don't misconstrue Street, my... Site and pavement. When they're available, when it's easy to do them as 11 by 17s, we do request them for the board as 11 by 17, so you can have them flip through them in there. Uh, a little easier to see than on the computer screens. So how does everybody feel about some type of uh, entry monuments, yes. some type of structure, whether it's signage or waterfall or Definitely. Roman columns or, you know, <laughs> something to, hey, here's the arbors or so one of the some type of... <coughs> at the Atlantic Ave and at the 250 entries. So, Excellent. The, so yeah. the manual says that yeah. the only monument signs we can have are at the entrance right. of a development. Right, that's what you're and talking I think about. It's right. a, I think it's a wonderful idea. Why, yeah, they why wouldn't yeah. 
why wouldn't the project developer want to right. announce to the well, world that they've a, that's their yeah. destination? I, I think it's a selling point, as are the multimodal. Yeah, I'm sure they're gonna well, even the potential, they one of Chris's recommendations right, was do they put a small commercial building out on the frontage there too, which introduces you both to the fact that this development is more than residential because all you can see from the road is the townhomes and the apartment. You're not gonna see the, the commercial aspects of this development from there. So if you have a commercial building up by the front of the road, <coughs> does this introduce this to you as this, this development or this area has commercial as part he's of it? He's talking about the northwest corner there of Atlantic and... Uh, so uh, he showed one... Gucci Boulevard? He showed one, essentially one at each, each entrance. I don't know about the Atlantic side if that works as well because of the proximity to the townhomes there. Yeah. But certainly on the southeast corner coming in off of Route 250. Um, you know, in a drawing that Chris had provided to the, to the board showed a, a small commercial building there which could be used as a focal point, play off the architectural design of the development, introduce this as a development that is more than just a residential neighborhood. Um, and you know, potentially provide a, a, a commercial catalyst because, you know, having the eyeballs on um, 250 and Atlantic Avenue, two heavily trafficked roads, um, could get early commercial in as they work to get the commercial tenants um, within the development itself um, while providing sort of that entry, you know, whether they are, they're marked or indicated or if they're developed in coordination with some other monumentation you know, maybe on the, the opposite side of the entrance drive to let you know what this development is about and that it's more than just um, some town townhomes and apartments. So would the, would the intent for the signage be to also identify what businesses are in there? I don't think that looks good. I I'd, agree, I'd, or I'd, would I it just necessarily be, do that? Or um, would it, or for the identity of the business, they would just, whomever was going there might just know an address. I don't know. Yeah, I think well, a menu board gets a little messy at the entrance of a... Yeah, here's, I'm yeah, not thinking a menu here's, board, here's a, but... You, you go into a town, at the entry to the town, you don't necessarily have a, a list right. of all the businesses that are in that town. So if, if a, you know, Ken Hours Cafe is in the center there and you have an address and people, you know, put that in their phone, they're going to turn left off of 250 or whatever and they're going to go to this area. Now, they're, if they got to get out of their car, park, and then walk to find it, mm -hmm. then it might make sense for wayfinding. Now, signs. maybe maybe something like, and I saw a mixed use in the last few weeks in South Carolina, there wasn't any of the businesses that were identified at the main road, but within it there was like a small map. That's not a bad idea. So when you go in, there might have been a place that was kind of a directory that showed all the buildings in the development and then listed what was in the buildings right? kind of thing. And I don't believe they've shown us anything quite like that. Yeah. They did, they did like provide an internal wayfinding, but it was more yeah. what the decorative street signs were going to look like. Or sometimes if you're driving onto a campus and you're looking for a building, there's a simple, you know, I don't know. I would say that we should be open to that. I don't know if that's going to be necessary here. Yeah. I don't know that they're at this po that point at yeah. this time. Anyhow. I mean, that to me is almost a, uh, you know, do they come back in five years after it's been going? They've, they've gotten uh, comments from customers or whatever that they can't easily find a place and we want to put some sort of information kiosk up or something like that. Then, or Certainly if the future phase they come it, back, because there is more mixed use proposed for a yeah. future phase, you know, maybe when in that phase comes and they are proposing to do that that second mixed use area there um, east of the one well, if they come back of phase one they come back yeah. later they'd go to the ZBA for changes to the sign package 
Right, but that might actually be a slightly slight change to the site plan, though. Something like that. You don't. I mean, or if it's proposed as part of that phase, the board could review it as part of the site plan application. <coughs> but what are those twos and threes on there? Yeah, so I think Chris's idea was having a focal point because, you know, without it, you could drive by this and not know that there was anything more in there than residential from the road because you're not going to see the, the commercial of the mixed use, uh, the vertical mixed use buildings from, from the road. You're going to see the townhouses. You may see the apartment buildings when they're up. And I'm good with that. But there's nothing inviting you into. So how do we feel about... I mean, I, I personally don't, I, I'm fine with Chris's suggestions of having those commercial buildings there. I, for one, don't know if I'm, how strongly I feel that we definitely want a commercial building there. So if the applicant is totally <coughs> against that, how does everybody feel about? Should be at their discretion, I think. Forcing that issue or? Um, I wouldn't force that. That's there's nothing in our regulation that that would obligate them to do that. It's a recommendation. It, it's I think it's a nice recommendation, but I do too. I, I think it should be at their discretion. It is. Yeah, a let's see what they 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 think. You know, I, I could go either way. I guess if you know. How about you, Bob? What are your thoughts? I would see what they also what they would come up with. I mean, I definitely like, yeah. I want to have some type of entry monument. Right. That I think yeah, that's is something that we should definitely yeah. have. Yeah. Whether it, it also incorporates, not that the monument in the building would be the same thing. I don't think they would be the same thing. It'd be two different <coughs> structures. But having having that there, I, I, you know what, I'm not opposed. I'm not strongly for or strongly opposed. I'm somewhat ambivalent. Uh, it would it would provide more commercial in our, our zone mm -hmm. A area, yep. which is an area where we're, uh, the manual does suggest is our, our hev most heavily commercialized area. <clears throat> and, you know, really, it's it, as, as the mixed-use zone continues to creep uh, northward, th these are prime corners. Yeah. Oh, That's for sure. That's real estate. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, even if it's set aside as a, I mean, he's, he's going to sure. keep it forever. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, land-banked building for the future. <laughs> Okay. okay. Good. Everybody, what's everybody feel about the architecture that they've proposed? We've all, I think, been shown all the different uh, renderings and so on. Is that something that we need to uh, scrutinize a lot more? I haven't read. Chris's report, but what did Chris have to say, Doug? Yeah, it's not included here, so I want to take another look at that. I mean, initially, I remember it, it looked really nice, but I'd like to take a, another look at that report. If it's, uh, I don't have it here with all this paperwork. Chris was generally supportive of the architectural design. Mm -hmm. um, I know he... He likes barns. Yeah. <laughs> He likes what? Loves barns. He's like barns. Barns, right? Um, yeah, what's he, I mean, uh, he, in, in all of the developments that he's reviewed for the board so far, he has uh, pushed heavily to have the architecture incorporate the historic past of Penfield um, so is, far. I think which is this what is, our is, regulations say. I mean, yep, that's what he yep. should be doing. And and so, I, you know, I want to say all of his comments regarding the architecture, at least the, the bu building design side of it, for the vertical mixed use was very positive. Um, some of the 
residential style, and I, I apologize, I don't have the, the memo in front of me. Um, the, some of the residential buildings, um, his comments uh, said that, I think he called it semi-compliant, um, in that the, so if you scroll, go back up, I think it was comment number, or the second bullet point, is that some of the, the designs lack the connection to Penfield's historic past. Um, It's, so that's a hard, it's a hard metric to set um, you know, with a lot of the residential buildings, the materials being used do sort of have some of that historic feel. I mean, they're looking at board and batten and stone as opposed to, you know, doing some neoclassical suburban style architectural design, but uh, I think Chris thinks there's more more can be done to make the residential buildings, especially the townhomes, look a little bit more historic than uh, the architecture that's proposed. Hmm. But I, mean, I don't know about that, but, but I mean, I'm willing to take a look and see what he thinks uh, yeah. that comes in. I mean, he usually comes up with some good suggestions, but I mean, in the renditions, it looks like some of the buildings are actual brick and that's what you'd find around the four corners area in that mm -hmm. picture until we really see the materials i don't know it looks like it's more brown but i think a mix of <coughs> brick <coughs> structures <coughs> and the elevations so you know wood-sided structures that's what you see around the four corners Yeah. I'm thinking of the uh, the townhomes or the apartment building. Uh, I don't think, th there's no apartment buildings as part of phase one, so if we want to focus on the townhomes, um, but the architectural that's overall the commercial ones. That's is. two side by side, right? Did they respond to a Chris Lopez's uh, uh, recommendation? No, they got it. Huh? They're, they're, they're going to be responding okay, to so it. Okay, so once they got it, yeah. We'll take a look at it and see what they come up with and then uh, Maybe they'll come up with something good. I think it, I don't, I don't know that our regulations really make this distinction, but I think it might be easier to modify some of the facades on the commercial buildings um, to, to try to tie in some of the old agricultural and barn type structures that are in or near the. Uh, and I think the, the commercials where it was, their commercial designs were the most successful of the ones that they've of their architecture here, because they do sort of have that turn of the century, um, you know, I don't, you know, downtown, I don't think every, like, I don't think every housing style has to look like it would <laughs> fit in an 1826 environment. <laughs> yeah, right. um, yeah. I think that the continuity, if not the commercial buildings, but you, if you look at how the, all the residential buildings flow from street to street and housing style to housing style, I think he did a brilliant job. I do too. And I, I like Bob's comment about changing up materials so that it's not necessarily just different colors of siding, but right. there could be a mix of brick, stone, siding, you know, a number of different things to create uh, a feel that the same person didn't build all the same all the buildings at the same time. You know that it was kind of an organically grown community, um, and honestly, that's what maybe the way we should be looking at every single one of the developments in that fashion. That um, yeah, I, you know, I think as we as we go along and and we develop a better sense of the intent of the manual and, and we, you know, speak to more designers and, and more developers and, and get feedback from our consultants, you know, this becomes a, a bit of a clearer picture. Um, yeah. and, uh, and, I, and I think Chris uh, as well is maybe developing 
kind of a better sense of what right. the intent of the manual was and kind of how we might help those applications better tie in with the intent, you know. Agreed. Looking at, Catherine, can you pull up the mixed use manual pages 74 and 75? So pages 74 and 75 is section 6.16. It's the architectural references. Um, it is a collection of some images of um, architecture. So actually, can you focus on page 75? Because that's more the residential side. Um, you know, these are some of the images that were included in the manual as architectural reference. These ones focus on the residential side, um, you know, so. So let me just stop yeah. you right there. From an architectural standpoint, yeah. this, is, this is not representative yeah. of the historic nature of the town of Penfield at all. Oh. And, and these pictures were more kind of uh, telling the backstory about what the committee considered in the development of, of the language for the manual and certainly should not be used as a architectural guide for what we hold applicants to. Okay. Yeah, I think it was uh, meant as a... Um, springboard for how to think about something. Right, so that, uh, you know, on the bottom picture, there's the single family, small single family on a, you know, separate, almost a separate lot uh, to allow for greater density. It doesn't mean yeah. that, you know, we're looking for houses that look just like that. Or, uh, you know, the above photos from Lubbock, Texas, and it's fine for Lubbock. I, I think that it was meant more as, okay, you have a variety, a variety of looks. Yeah, no question. I I just, I'm just saying from yes. an architectural no. style, <laughs> yes. they're not representative of what we're doing. And, and certainly Chris doesn't use these yeah. images in, in the, you know, culmination of his recommendations to these applicants <clears throat> and yeah and fair enough um, you know I was looking at them uh, you know some of the details that the references pull out are some that you know having a front porch and set back to the mm -hmm. sidewalks and things like that are things that we see right in the proposed development and uh, you know focusing on the architectural style, I don't know if there's um, you know in the in the memo they do reference Chris does <coughs> reference a couple of publications that we could um, suggest that the applicant look at to pull inspiration for architectural design. Um, I don't. I don't, th it, particularly at this point in time, uh, I don't think we tell the applicant that they need to re reconsider their their architectural design. I mean, I I get that there might be some subtle ways to to maybe pull in that historic nature of our community, in particular, the portion of our community that's in proximity to the mixed use zones. But I I certainly wouldn't suggest to them that they scrap all of this beautiful work and go back to the drawing board and do something else. Oh, well, I don't think anybody's suggesting no. that. No. Yeah, I don't think anybody's suggesting that either. Let you know, see what they come up with. And if uh, <clears throat> Chris has some illustrations from someplace, let's take a look at those, see what he's throwing out there, and then let them respond to his comments and uh, get some feedback then, and then we'll take a look at it again. Yeah, I mean... I I will it's say, bad. you know, that out of no. everything that we've seen so far, this 
development is uh, the closest, the most like what I imagine. Or oh, the direction that we're looking yeah. for, really. And I, I, I so. have not seen, I can't really say I don't like any of the architecture that they've proposed. I mean, I, to Bob's point, you know, I see renderings, and if it's all, okay, this got yellow siding, that's got gray siding, and that's got red siding, but it's all siding, I would like to see some mix of materials. And they probably have that, that I just, <clears throat> I'm, it's escaping me exactly where. But I just want to, you know, I think that we want to make sure that there is a mix of materials. Correct. Yeah. Like my brick. <laughs> there it is. Brick There's stone. my brick right there. Thank you. <laughs> Here we go. Well, Thank you very much. Snug brick. Nice. <laughs> Cobblestone. Cobblestone. Yeah. Right. Call it. Okay. Yeah. Barn like. Okay. Okay. Uh, moving on to this. Um, Yeah, we're going to have to come to some conclusion, and I don't know if it's up to us or up to us in co combination with the town board about the multi-use trail. Um, have you done any further study on that, Pete? Did a little bit. I, I um, it seems to me that this. So you've got the sidewalk requirement. And I think that the town board is really the only body who can waive that requirement. Well, and let's, let's say it's not waived and they build the, quote, sidewalks, but the sidewalks happen to be yeah, but in I think those you, locations. But I think if you do and that. And in that material, like they're proposing asphalt, I think, instead so of. The, yes. I, that, I think that's, prob uh, that, that's really concrete. probably a departure from the sidewalk requirement, yeah. though, because yeah. they're not in the right of way. Uh, I think I would want to get some feedback from PRC, from, uh, you know, Eric Tate, maybe, um, DPW, and, um, and probably Mark Valentine. To even consider that you're talking about? Is that what get, get some early feedback on yeah. that. Mm -hmm. but the I think asphalt. The asphalt uh, we're talking about? Well, so, so the sidewalk policy really outlines that this, the sidewalks are to be placed along the frontages of the property generally adjacent to the right of way um, we we require uh, part of the policy requires that the town has a seven foot sidewalk easement along all frontages on roadways um, and that sidewalks are provided five foot wide sidewalks are provided within those frontages um, in the town that is part of a sidewalk policy that was enacted by the town board so the town board is the one that has the ability to waive that whether they consider what is proposed in this circumstance um, to be qualifying um, with regards to the sidewalk policy, I think is something that they would have to make the determination on. Did they ask for, they didn't even ask for a waiver, correct? They, they haven't yet, because they're, yeah. they're waiting on our feedback. Right. They're, in our discussions with them, um, they were interested to see if the multi-use trail would satisfy that requirement in some way, or if it doesn't, if it can be if the town board or, you know, as we were looking at it, whether it was going to be the town board or the planning board, mm -hmm. um, look at waiving it, you know, whether consideration could be given to what they are proposing, um, even if it doesn't necessarily. I just don't think it's up to us yes. to right. make that determination. Right. It's either going to be the authorized official who interprets the code, right. you know, maybe Andy Savegas, or, or probably more likely the, the town board whose requirement it really is. Yeah, I really didn't like their suggestion about it. Actually, you don't like it? No, that they, their proposal. No, I think we should keep the sidewalks. What don't you like so about the asphalt? You, what don't you like about? I the, don't like that asphalt idea. They threw so out. If, so if they're going to maintain it, and they're to, they're talking about ten foot wide asphalt, if they're going to put it in a ease, grant an easement to the town, and they're going to agree to maintain it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it looks good. <clears throat> I think it's a nice project. They get the sidewalks in there, and then they're going to ruin it by asphalt, actually. So no, I, I just just picture that. You'd rather have five foot concrete than ten foot asphalt. Correct. Okay. Okay. What's your opinion? 
I'd like to see <clears throat> if it's for, um, you know, people on foot, people on bikes, you know, definitely a wider walkway. Um, I'm not real crazy about it being an asphalt material. So that I is think something that does come out of the manual because we have had other groups look at doing stone dust as opposed to asphalt. Um, the town really, and I think the mixed use manual reflects um, some early <clears throat> conversations in the town that the asphalt is easier to maintain and easier for um, snow removal than a stone dust path or some other form okay. of... Um, I'm you know, pretty sure at. that the Federal like Access papers. Board has... Like yeah, that. let's it's go nice. all... It's real nice. Go all yes. out. Yeah, Said I'm sure that. Mr. Tucci would really like that. <laughs> they went, I just, I want to touch on this stone dust thing because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm pretty sure that the Federal Access Board has, has issued a bulletin saying that uh, stone dust trails do not meet the requirements for an exterior accessible route. Okay. So it has okay. to be a, a hard well, you know, there's, there's, the, you know, certain elements there that uh, there's a, there is, there's a coefficient of friction. Things can be too slippery and things can be too sticky. Mm -hmm. um, so people that are mobility impaired might not be able to take a, a, a wheeled walker through a stone dust path. They might get their feet caught in it. Um, you know, I, I see it done in certain areas, but I don't believe that that's, um, I don't believe that that's appropriate. They're not proposing that any. Yeah, I'm going to say that they, no. they just threw that out there. No, I just, I, well, I, they, I right only now. mention yes. that because um, just one ahead. of the other Sounds applicants, um, yeah. one of the other applicants, I won't say who here, but one of the other applicants was talking about stone some dust. stone yeah. dust pathways uh, in a proposed community. And right. I just, I, I meant to mention that before on the record and I didn't. Okay, so noted. So the. Um, I, my only concern with asphalt is how, how well it's maintained. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't want to ultimately see chunks and broken up parts. Mm -hmm. And if it's maintained very nicely, I'm, yeah, I'm you know, kind of, I'm, I'm okay with it. I would encourage uh, all of you guys to come to my office and park in the alley between the parking garage <coughs> and the office building and look at the stamped pavement that was put down this past fall. It looks like brick pavers. I believe it's so it. stamped it concrete like, or asphalt? No, it's asphalt. It's stamped asphalt. And it's, it's very well done. And it has a, uh, uh, a kind of a polymer coating on it um, because this, this would be more expensive than concrete pavement <laughs> to saw cut and replace and match the pattern and the color. Um, so, I mean, if I mean if you're if you're concerned about the look, that might be an yeah. option. Yeah, I agree with AJ. The maintenance on it and just the look. There was a section of the four corners that was an asphalt sidewalk. And it looked horrible for years and years and years. And it was finally replaced with concrete. So, but, you know, if it's maintained, it can look nice. I've seen stamped asphalt where it's left to not be maintained. It loses its color. It loses, you know, like anything else. This is, so. a, this is a really new technology. It's okay. maybe two or three years old. If you're thinking about what those crosswalks looked like in the Four Corners 10 years ago, yeah. where yeah. they basically just painted a pattern uh, on, on the pavement, this is not what that is. Yeah. This, this was, this this was deep I, and yeah. it looks like it's embossed. Yeah, it's, what I had seen, it was actually a circular, and when it was first done, it looked like pavers that were put in. But then over time, it wasn't maintained, and then it just deteriorated. Come take a look. Yeah, and maybe it wasn't sealed right. I don't know. I don't know. 
So the question is the uh, treatment that was done at your building. Obviously, it's more money than just regular asphalt. Is it how much more? And no it's expensive. Is it? A friend of mine that did it, sealed it, and then it was slippery and there was problems and they had to redo this it again. This is not slippery at all. Huh? This is not slippery well, at maybe all. Maybe there's a different see, compound. I'm talking about in the last I mean, I, I, years. I'm not talking about 10 years ago, but so, you know, yeah, well, no, I'm going to take you up on lunch of, on next week, so I'll be down there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the invitation. <laughs> <laughs> I walked right into that, didn't you? I? Did. You did. Definitely did. <laughs> Monday, good for you. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. All right, I'll buy you lunch. Okay. What's engineering's feeling about asphalt? And I mean, I love the the ten foot wide. Uh, uh, I think you're going to lose something if you go push them towards concrete. I think concrete's going to be astronomically high. Mm -hmm. Asphalt will be cheaper. Um, stamped asphalt might have some middle ground where you know you get sort of the look you want. Um, but I think if you go pushing them towards a five or a concrete path, you're going to get a narrower path, and right. they might even say we rather just put the sidewalk in the right of way. I mean, I have no idea. Five foot. Five, you know, concrete sidewalk in the right of way rather than having this. And certainly a five foot sidewalk, you can't, you can't really, you can't really, pat. I mean, just two people walking on a five foot yeah. concrete sidewalk is, <clears throat> Yeah. you got to slow down and pay attention there. If you're talking about other forms of transportation in opposing directions, I think you need the extra width. Right. Well, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. as far as maintenance, yeah, anything you need to maintain. I mean, we maintain concrete sidewalks on a yearly basis. We we have money that we set aside, and there's, you know, slabs that we have to replace, and they crack and spall and, you know, heave and all that good stuff. Asphalt, you know, same thing. You, you have parts that are all, if it's not put in properly, will spall and you know, crack, but it's all a maintenance thing. Do we, you know, I certainly don't think that around the, the northwest and the western uh, portion of this, it needs to be stamped and, uh, you know, it's almost out in a, almost like a nature preserve. Well, and the yeah. sidewalk uh, policy wouldn't address those areas anyhow. Correct. So I, I'm more looking at 250 frontage and Atlantic yeah. Ave Agreed. frontage. That's that what you're be, talking that about, we're right? Talking right, about Chief? Here. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I just want them to be clear about what we're talking about here with that, too. So can I ask a question? So if you put, if you had... Under our sidewalk policy, if you required the sidewalks to go along 250 in Atlantic, are the sidewalks in the right of way or out of the right of way? Generally. Well, technically, we want them in the right of way, but okay. logistically, if there's conflicts with utility poles, whatever, anything, it might be a combination of both right of way and okay. private property, and that's generally where the easement. Right. Away. Okay. right. That's what I thought, because mm -hmm. somebody said something earlier about an easement. I, if, if you, you know, allowed them to use the path, you know, then you would want an easement, and you'd want there to be some type of, um, you know, be covered by the, by the maintenance agreement. Well, I think what Ralph was talking about was uh, um, being willing to, in theory, put them entirely on uh, right. his property, but granting an easement to the town so that... Right. Right. The town could yeah. you know, plow them. He'd be responsible to maintain them long term, but the town could still, you know, plow them for the. Well, I think we were looking for them to plow oh. it yeah. as well. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> now looking to help us, us to plow. Well, I mean, <laughs> part of it is he's he's got those right out in front. I mean, if you think about it, it's, it's right. 
in front of those all those townhomes and right, and all those areas basically main entrance that um, you know he wants for his development itself so um, <coughs> I guess it behooves him to plow them as well and that was one of the so questions. So the idea would be there's an easement there. There's also an easement along the right of way, sidewalk easement for the future if now. necessary, right? As mm -hmm. a backup plan. And the sidewalks, instead of going closer to the road, they're set into the property more on 250 and Atlantic. And they're a 10 foot wide. Uh, Maybe we look into the stamped asphalt. Would you be willing to? Oh yeah, I've looked at it before. It. I'm gonna look at that because yeah. maybe it's something new that you know the yeah. one that I've I mean, seen I, already. Right. You know, I mean, maybe it's something different, but I'll take a look at it. Well, to me, yeah. there's there's yeah, there's always alternatives. New you know, new materials yeah, and new sure, treatments definitely. and things that are that are uh, come out all the time. Um, and then the rest of the trail. Uh, can be, you know, the the regular asphalt, right? I would think that he will maintain. So, excuse me, the sidewalks there along the front, because in front of the townhouses. I mean, they should maintain them, shouldn't they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the way I look at it. So. Yeah. Unless he's got a problem, and we'll hear him out. But uh, yeah, I don't think the town no, should be responsible for it, to, anyways. He's agreed to maintain them. Yeah, yeah. as I thought. Yeah, I, well, I didn't he, know because he said were that. Concerned about. Who's going to plow it? Oh, it's them. Like, no, they should, I think, no, I plow think it. they said they, they would plow yeah. it. Okay. That's right. I don't know what we're talking about. Um, okay. Are we done with the sidewalk? One more to the to yeah. the north. What road is that? Is that Penfield um, Center? Center? Penfield Center. Penfield road. Center. What was our, I guess, thinking on the. Right. Oh, okay. It's got a connector that goes out to Penfield Center. Mm hmm. Is the intent for the town to put a sidewalk out that far? Uh, so, I, based on feedback that we got during the two sketch plans, um, I, I know part of the reason they're not showing anything because they did at one point show more sidewalks uh, along Penfield Center Road was um, the during the sketch water. plan, the two sketch plans back in 2018, as the neighbors were very vocal about not wanting sidewalks along okay. Penfield Center Road. They much rather just walk in the road and deal with less people on Penfield Center than yeah, have I sidewalks. I remember that now, thanks for um, that. And having additional connections. Reminder. So we did show the one, or they do show the one, because we still wanted to have some form of connection out there. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but it would still be, in theory, future sidewalk in the town. Potential, and that's why we will, fee. yes, we'll yeah. still take, yeah. yes, so part of the waiver is there is a fee associated with it, but we would still take the easement as well, so that there is the the ability to, in the future, if the town chose to move forward with it, put sidewalks along. You probably would want a stub of some sort on, uh, at the end, where, you know, to go back to any future sidewalk going up 250 or Atlantic at you know at either end of the development so part of the problem is they don't own the corner property uh, There's a single family residence right. there that recently sold so I think they, they but do you are going to want to have it connect in yeah. somewhere like it'll be a dead-end stub like sometimes there's dead-end sidewalks all over town you kind of yeah Well as part of also the PRC comments um, we've asked the applicant to provide uh, basically stubs where um, to kind of go from where that where Catherine's showing the hand to go to 250, okay. and also closer to on the other the south side, Catherine by the pond. Keep going. Got to no. Right. So the north side of the pond, provide yeah. another stub so that anybody that is walking along 250 could gain access into the development. Oh, yeah, the, without the, walking yeah. like right. half and a mile. Or, correct. And there's yeah. some conversation that okay. that stub could come around the pond to that corner property, be stubbed on the corner property. So if that corner property, because they, they show a stub deep in uh, that that corner, and if it develops out where they don't really have sidewalks in that back area, if they did stub out a section yeah. that was closer to the right-of-way down by 250, there's already showing a stub on yeah. the Atlantic side. 
um, that if they did a more traditional sidewalk as part of whatever develops in that corner, that it would be able to tie into um, yeah. the multi-use trail as part of it. So if they did stub on the, the <clears throat> east side of the, the pond and come down to the property boundary with... Yeah, I, I'd much prefer... Yeah. I mean, I get why they don't want to do both on the west side of the pond and on the east side of the pond there. Well, but there's also kind of restrictions and, well, I shouldn't say restrictions. There's some, there's some topography um, challenges that might prevent a sidewalk, and they also have their spillway from the pond. So it's really not ideal on the east side of the pond. It's, okay. It's generally better on the west side, so you don't have... I mean, I, I'm hoping we would never use the spillway, but... So then does it does the stub need to go down along the south edge of the pond in between the property line and the pond? Well, that's something where, we, you know, maybe we adjust it. Sure. You don't want to get too close to that pond. There's a lot of communities that have had problems with kids falling into gators the pond. and stuff. And, yeah. That we, too. I haven't seen any gators recently, but... Uh, you know. hey. They're coming. Climate change. <laughs> All right now, I think we're done with the sidewalks. Yeah. Well, yeah. we got stub stub issues on the north end also. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> so where that other that's another pond there. Yes. In yes. the very north east corner. So there should be probably a stub, maybe one that comes right out along that entryway. Well, there is a sidewalk that goes along there. We were also, I think... What about on the north side instead of the south side? Well, we can have them adjust that if you want. Well, I'm just thinking to get it as close to that corner property so that if the town is putting in sidewalks later, it's less material. Good thought. Mm -hmm. Just thinking. Trying to think. You know, save our taxpayers' money. That's what I'm trying to do. Good job. <laughs> I'm a taxpayer. You are Save a civic, civic minded individual. <laughs> now, can we move on from sidewalks? I believe so, yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay, so we also, let's go on to um, lighting because, um, you know, there's been discussion about lighting on the trail. I don't necessarily know if we need lighting all the way around the back side of the trail. I would like to see some uh, pedestrian lighting, and I'm good with like, landscape lighting, lighting up trees and stuff, and the trees become the luminaires to light the, light the trail. I think that would look beautiful. Um, I'd like to see that in a number of places around so that you know, it's a very inviting space after dark. Um, so, this accent lighting on structures, that kind of thing, and so all they're showing are, you know, some poles. Yeah, this this got brought up in the last public hearing. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> part of the lighting section says. Interior public space lighting should complement the surrounding streetscape and architecture, blah, 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 and be incorporated into surrounding design elements. Sidewalks, walkways, and pedestrian gathering spaces within mixed-use developments should be lit for safety and aesthetics. And I, I, I seem to recall there was some dialogue back and forth, um, and I don't know if it was one of us or if it was somebody from the applicant side that suggested that you know, maybe they shouldn't illuminate all of those. Did you did you bring up light bollards? I I think I brought up light bollards, yeah, bollards but I do think good, somebody did suggest that you three know, foot tall. Do, yeah. we, do we want Beautiful. to be? Yeah. Have to be so it's not like intense. it's not light pollution, <clears throat> but right. it it gives them yeah. some subtle high class know, look. Yeah. Yeah. But you know. It, it, what I'm reading here, they would need a waiver from us if they didn't want to didn't do. want to illuminate all of those walkways, pathways, public spaces. But I guess is the board's thoughts on the whole path, or maybe just the portion that's along 250 and Atlantic Avenue? Well, no, it says interior. This is specific to the interior spaces in the mixed-use development. 
But are we talking right, but what about the multi-use? The, the multi-use trail around the west and north, you know, around the back side of the, can you zoom out, Kat? Yeah, so, where the pond is and. So I would throw that back at you, AJ. You're the lighting expert. I mean, yeah. if, they, if they used light bollards that were, you know, uh, very low level illumination and they put them every 20 feet, is that, I mean, they're. They'd provide enough. Uh, you know, they're spilling a half of a foot candle. Yeah. Yep. Something yeah, like that. Yeah, I mean, they're obviously brighter feet. right where they are, but they'd. You'd yeah, have, but then the uh, light, it would yeah. fade in, so you kind of had yeah. dark spots. It wouldn't be. Right. You know, I, I guess. Yeah, I, your uniformity is not going to be like a, you know, shopping mall parking lot. No, but something. maybe but when that's they not get what out you want there. closer to the commercial spaces, then yeah, if they're they using tighten them up a little they bit. would be you know, right. ten foot apart or whatever. Yep. But I guess my thought, question is: Is the board's idea of it all the way around, or because those are more residential on the north and the west side of the project, do you want to keep it more quiet and? If I'm, if I'm living in here and I have children, and those children are going from their buddy's house in the next neighborhood over back home, I want them to walk on a lit trail. Yes, but I think what Mike's talking about is that, let's say you live on a mushroom, and your kid's going to uh, his buddy's or her buddy's uh, that's right on Atlantic Ave. They're, not gonna, they're probably going to go through the interior streets to come back home not that trail that's along the far western edge along the gun club property line. Yeah, you're probably right. So, and that but, wouldn't be interior to the mixed use development. That would be exterior so to the mixed the, use development. So the question is, do we, you know, I think that there's an argument to be made that, you know, it's February, almost March, and it's still dark at six o'clock. Um, you know, if I live here, I get home from work and I want to go for a walk, I think it'd be nice to walk along that, that trail. You know, it's not totally snowy all the time here. We have freezes and thaws and it's dark a lot of the year. So if you want, if to you me, want there to is an argument to be made to light it so that it would be a nice place to walk at night if you wanted to go for i like a walk, lighting <laughs> <laughs> you could you could in th if if we held their feet to the fire with what i believe it's saying in here um then you could go for a walk along interior lit walkways um but if you want to propose to them that you know there's a an argument for providing low-level illumination for the perimeter multimodal trail. Um, see what well, and then there's with. a question, I guess, to your point, if you're talking about internal to the development, what is considered internal to the, to the development? Is it anything within the property line or property boundaries? Yeah. Or is it what would be considered internal to the development? I don't know. What do you where, think? Where does that, where is that uh, delineation? I, w I would think border. that it's anything that's not on the outside perimeter, but, you know, maybe somebody else thinks that it's everything within the. I the like lighting. <laughs> <laughs> My opinion would be that, like, if you took the outside border of units, the townhouses on the outside, anything internal from that would be see, internal. I'd, I'd say I'm thinking it's, it's, it's more of a reference to excluding any of the sort of right-of-way sidewalks as part of the, you know, when it talks mm -hmm. about sidewalks, walkways, and pedestrian gathering spaces within the development should be lit. Yeah, I, w I would agree with that. W that they're, wouldn't they're, wanna, they're talking about not including necessarily yeah. lighting along. You wouldn't want to compel them to illuminate all the outside yeah, perimeter yeah, the, All the perimeter sidewalks, sidewalks but we they're talking about anything else. that's integral that's what I'm to trying the interior. To, what about AJ's yeah. trail, though? He wants lighting. Huh? I think I, I agree with Mike and his... I agree with Mike. 
Morty. Right. Morty. Right. Morty. Right. <laughs> everybody agreeing to? I, th- I, I think Mike and I were saying the same <laughs> thing. <laughs> They're, They're saying agree. the same They're thing. Saying the same I'm thing. not looking yeah. for the trail to be lit necessarily, unless you guys are. Oh, so I'm I looking think the, at the trail think should be lit because the trail is going to be a. Uh, Especially that, that, especially along the the residential sides of it, is that's that's where people are going to be walking to to, to public, travel places. Yeah. I could see not on the walking on it uh, up by the pond side because it's not a direct well, connection. Well, we're oh. we're encouraging people to walk and get healthy and do things. And to me, um, you know, when you when you walk along a nicely lit pathway. Nicely lit, mm-hmm. Very you know, tastefully lit, not lighting, yeah. not like Cobra Head street lights. Yeah. Tastefully lit, whether it's trees, bollards, a mix of those types of things, you are enjoying the walk. Mm-hmm. You're enjoying all the eye candy that's out there at night that's, it looks cool. And yeah. to me, that's an amenity that would make me want to live there. Is it on the lighting plan or no? No, it's not. No. It's just some, uh, you know, poles. All oh, poles. On the trail? Like Did street light type poles. No, no, there's nothing on the trail. Nothing, nothing on, on the, the trail. trail. Just the, the trail at this point is only yeah. intended to be illuminated by, you know, if somebody turns the front porch light on on the townhouse. So, are, are you expecting us to... to um, Put together a, a response. I mean, we don't have anything to respond to tonight. We're just no. I, I, this is this well, is this well, could, all of this discussion can be put into our uh, tabling uh, continuing resolution. tabling resolution sure. that should go back to the applicant about our discussions. But we haven't gotten a response on the last tabling resolution. <laughs> I guess is my point. Doesn't so, matter. Yeah. Well, I think it does because you don't know what they're going to tell us. You know, right. you don't know whether they've right. paid attention to some of our comments along the way, and right. some of these issues will res- resolve themselves. Uh, true, true. But I guess we can put our discussions and our thoughts into a resolution, a tabling resolution tonight and send it along. And that can be uh, reviewed along with the previous one. And if things have been addressed, then we address those answers at that time. Okay, so do you have a list of things you want to put in this? Well, I think that we put in the, our comments on the sidewalks. I think we put in our comments on the lighting. The lighting. I think we put our comments on the, uh, you know, the, the green shading that you want to see the buildings uh, delineated. Clarification um, page 75. I think the, the, um, the discussion about uh, um, bike, lane. bike lanes or multimodal Scooters, transportation bikes. lanes, mm-hmm. the ATLs, what is it, alternative transportation So two of those lanes. things we don't really have a, an, a, we don't agree amongst ourselves. So we can, we can say to the applicant, um, please tell the board how you intend to comply with and then give them that, that section specific to lighting of walkways and so forth. And just leave it at that. Let them read that part of the ordinance and come back and tell us how they intend to comply. Correct. And, and we I'm don't have to guess that, uh, spell it out for them. Probably several people are either viewing this right now or will definitely view it before mm-hmm. um, the next meeting. And the same thing with the sidewalk because we're, <coughs> we have a little bit of a difference of opinion no. amongst us. On Lunch, Monday. Like, like <laughs> Sorry. about sidewalks in two or three different locations. Um, so maybe we ask them to clarify. Ham sandwich is um, all it takes to get them to. That's all you want is a ham, ham sandwich? Ham and mustard, Chief. <laughs> Cheese. He's going to want me to take him to 1 East Avenue. That's where he wants oh, to go. Oh, a thought. <laughs> Jim, don't you have a lunch meeting next Monday? Yeah, I guess I do now. now. Well, no, I mean uh, an actual meeting. <laughs> Mike, we remember they agreed with you before. <laughs> yeah. I'll push it. Has, has, he, has the applicant seen uh, Chris Lopez's comments yet? Yes, you, they, they, they just they re- got, yes, they they just got, got them. So there's a, yeah, they're, they're you know, there's a, again, I, I don't want to 
draft a whole big lengthy thing for them yet when we're not sure what we really want to say about some of these topics and and we don't know what they're going to say about the comments that they recently got from the town and the town's consultants is all I'm saying you know this is kind of a kind of an intermediate and we could leave uh, some of the the items relatively open-ended and see what they're responses to so instead of yeah, saying I mean, you should put bike lanes on X, X Y and Z roads because all the, the roads have names I don't remember them is to say you know investigate if there are other areas within the community where bike lanes could fit or be a potential um, you know. yeah and the Mike said the you day. already they already asked yeah. them to um, remove the green shading from the footprint of the structures on there and to verify that the matrix that they gave the town is consistent with that revised plan or what have you so that's already been conveyed to them too so okay all right what else on this do we need to discuss tonight i think you've so far we've given them a lot to yeah. Digest. Are, are we? Um, I mean, we haven't discussed anything about stormwater or these ponds or any of that kind of stuff. Is, uh, I mean, the engineering department have that pretty well in hand. And yeah, we've reviewed uh, it. I mean, we have some technical comments on um, the uh, west or the eastern southeastern pond to meet some regulations, but. Otherwise, you know, it meets the intent and actually removing some of the pavement will help improve the water quality aspect of the project. So, yes. And sanitary sewers have been an Snow ongoing. storage. Um, garbage. It's going to be totes probably outside these buildings. Well, I Most likely. Probably, we should probably ask that. I'm assuming... Yeah, Ask know, what the, the plan is. an official answer from them. Parking seems to make sense. Mm -hmm. There's enough in close enough proximity to where it needs to be. Um. Okay. We move on. Mm -hmm. uh, Bob, you want to motion to table uh, sure. and incorporate um, our discussion points? Sure. Do we want to do that as continue another table. tabling resolution? Or continue. Yeah, yes. conti a continuing yeah, tabling continue. resolution. Yeah, continue. Okay. Move to. Um, as the elements that we discussed uh, prepare a tabling resolution. Tiding second. All right. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. Okay. Next All one. All right. Tabled application number three. Penfield Heights, who was just here for their public hearing on the 10th. Since our last meeting, um, we received uh, responses to PRC, the tabling resolution and all that uh, about two hours ago. Um, so staff is, is uh, just beginning a review. Um, I do know that they did not submit with the most recent revision in the lighting plan, which was one of the conditions mm -hmm. of the original tabling resolution. They said they are working on that, um, and specifically right now it's working on areas around Building A, Building F, which are the two right on the entrance, as well as uh, lighting for the um, trail around the pond area. So they'll be providing that here shortly. <coughs> so um, I, I have a fundamental question here mm -hmm. that I meant to ask again last week. It was in my notes and I forgot to ask this. Mm -hmm. This application was before the board and was denied. Mm -hmm. So how did we go from a denial of an application, skip a sketch plan, 
and go straight to preliminary final? Uh, I th believe it was the, there was a comfort level that was afforded the application uh, due to they had come into several PRC meetings as well as um, they had met and come back to the planning board as an informal work session item. They came in during one of the work sessions and, and sort of pitched or proposed their some of the changes that they were looking to make to satisfy some of the conditions or satisfy the conditions in the denial resolution. I, that, I, oh, sorry. Ahead, I'm thinking ahead. I we didn't we also bring them into a work session with the planning board? Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, we brought them back into oh, the to PRC. The, no, so I, I mean, we did bring them to PRC several times, but we did bring them back into the planning board as okay. a work session. Right. Item. But, you know, the the PRC has become uh, somewhat problematic in the respect that the applicants go to the PRC and they get direction from town officials and then they if the if the planning board raises a question about something that they believe was already resolved during an informal discussion with the PRC um, they they bring that up to us and say, well, wait a minute, we talked to the town about this, you know. So in their minds, they're, well, they're talking to the town, they're talking to the town. And I'm not, certainly not suggesting that we stop this process. I'm, I'm simply asking a question. I don't recall um, the board voting to allow the previous sketch plan application that was approved to serve as the precursor to a new site plan application for Penfield Heights. Maybe that's a question I think for they, you. I think they came before this board and asked if it was sufficiently uh, changed mm -hmm. to meet that standard for coming in with a new application as far as... Yeah, I just... Get the, I, yeah, the yeah, they, they came into to yes. the work session and okay. I believe directly asked the board if, if the they board did. was comfortable yeah. with Maybe October. the changes. Yeah. If, if, they, if we thought that there was that it was sufficiently changed to be acceptable to move the project forward. I just don't, I don't recall. You might not have been vote. Here, actually. Oh, that okay. might have been the meeting uh, when uh, you were not here, you were asked to come in remote. There was a meeting about. That I couldn't log in. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, that's, that's entirely possible, okay. I just it's about the time frame. Yeah. yeah, I think I had a I had a note here and I just Okay. Onward. Remember that night? You couldn't zoom. I do. I do. I still have trouble. <laughs> At we that do. advanced we do age, too. <laughs> you still remember it. I do. I still have trouble with Zoom uh, <laughs> with that Zoom software, but uh, anyhow. Okay. okay. So we yeah. just got some information. The town just got some information. Correct. So we're certainly not prepared to introduce any of that information you got. And they acknowledge right. that today yeah. in okay. the email. Yeah. So what what do we need to discuss tonight with respect to this application? Uh, tonight I was hoping um, at least uh, we had discussed at the last meeting a bit of the architecture, um, I didn't know if the board wanted to have more discussion on your feelings on the architectural changes that were made, I know. No, because we asked them specifically to give us some, some verification of materials, building heights, roof areas, and we have not yet received a response from that. So until we see what the applicant is proposing, well, we've seen what the applicant's proposing. Well, we don't. We don't know that you've asked for <coughs> the extent uh, of what they're proposing. You know how much of the roof exceeds the uh, 55 feet, um, and I think that number is down at like six percent, if I remember. You know, I, I think that I, I don't. Do we have renderings of what? Yeah, there's that one. 
And there's, so it's really um, the best rendering that we have. The other ones are sort of um, Google SketchUp outputs, which or Revit outputs, which. Um, so I guess are not. I mean, I don't. I based on that one uh, photoshopped rendering, that mm -hmm. I think they're moving in a, the direction toward the direction that we want them to go. I would like to see actual, you know, more than just a basic Google SketchUp of what they're proposing. Because well, and, and I, it's not up to me to actually design the bill. Oh, you know what? I want this on this part and this on that part and that well, kind that's of why we have Chris. Hmm. And so the package was sent to Chris. So th that process has not been completed yet. Right. Mm -hmm. Is everybody, you know, I guess I, I kind of want to know, I mean, this uh, height thing, um, where it is and what it is, for me, doesn't bother me. Really, really is not the mountain I'm going to die on. Um, but I don't know how everybody else feels about that. Uh, how do you feel about that? I think early on, my point was because the buildings start at an elevation much <clears throat> lower than 250, I was looking more of what using the center line of 250 is like the datum and kind of going up from there. Okay. And if it doesn't exceed the, you know, the requirements Maximum. for height, which it doesn't, then I don't have a problem with it. I think because that's where the visual impact is going to be is on 250. Okay. As long as it meets the requirements, I'm fine. I think the code requirement is that you yeah. measure it from the... Yeah. Yeah. And it seems to me that, to me, is one of the requirements that is a, is a mandatory minimum maximum that... The way I read that, it says maximum building height, four stories of 55 feet. If, if they're going to exceed that, then I think they, they need a variance. Mm -hmm. So we talked no about this a little bit make them last week. Hold them to the fire. That's and I don't, I don't disagree with you. I, the, the reason that I asked the question from the project architect was, um, you know, this might not be the only time that somebody comes to us and asks us, for a little wiggle room on yep. one of these quote unquote mandatory provisions. Right. Um, so the question is if we let them, uh, if we let them go, we grant them a waiver. I wouldn't call it a variance. Only the ZBA is authorized to grant variances in the town, right? So is, it, is the planning board who's charged with enforcing these documents authorized to, to issue a waiver from, I mean, that's, a, that's another question, but let's assume that we are, um, or that you know we could make a recommendation to a, a, a different form of town government. Mm -hmm. I, I just think we need to know what we're, what we're willing to, to grant. Are we willing to grant 5%? Are we willing to grant uh, five feet, you know, we just got to draw a line in the sand and until they tell us where that line is, I don't know. Yeah, and I don't, I don't know if I necessarily agree that it's a line in the sand, so to speak. It's, um, this, this to me is a particular situation because of the topography um, coming off of 250 and how much it drops and the statement that that particular, you know, it's the statement piece really architecturally when you pull into the development. So they're, they're making an argument, as I understand it, that that is, um, you come in and, and that's greeting you and it's creating an impact, drawing you into the don't disagree to the development, and I, and I don't disagree with and their so argument. From you know somebody else that comes in and says, well, you know what, we we really need 
six stories and it's going to be this high and you let those guys do it. I don't look at the two as the same in because of that. Either way, if the, if the, if the manual says 55 feet is 55 feet and the manual yeah. establishes where it's measured from, it's measured from grade. So, um, if we're if we're going to grant a waiver or recommend that the, say the town board grant a waiver, I I think they're going to ask us what it is that we're recommending. So yeah, and 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 maybe you're right because this has an extenuating circumstance. But even with this unusual circumstance, would you grant them 20 feet? Probably not. Maybe you grant them six feet. Well, you know. I guess that's where I'm looking at it like. Or, or the other question that I asked was, what, what's the percentage of mm -hmm. right. the roof? Right, so you look at that and you say, all right, so then do you uh, make that roof shallower pitch? Roof? Well, they could have done that very easily. I, I'm glad you brought yeah. that up. E even in light of the fact that the, that the you know, <coughs> project yep. you know, falls to the east, um, they certainly could have lowered the roof pitch on the core buildings, and then the peak at this particular face gable was at 55 feet, and everything else was a little, I mean, there are ways that they could have complied, and, and again, I'm not opposed to what they're proposing here, but I, I think we, we need to define what it is that we're granting if we're granting relief. And then again, we still need to yeah, know there's, there's if- a there's a, there's yeah. A, a several issues like that that I still need to hash through, and and that, I mean that's one of them. Okay, is is there a fire marshal issue with that height? No, the, the the issue for buildings is any building over 30 feet. The next threshold in the fire code is a high rise building that's 75 feet to the okay. low to the highest floor level. So, so if they did build this 55 with that, feet, most doesn't the this fire marshal would still would. No, the, the fire marshal is already aware of the fact that they needed aerial apparatus access. Okay. The, those changes have already been made mm -hmm. to the site plan. Uh, so, you know, this this change at, at the peak here doesn't have any impact further impact. In that. Okay, thank you. So, hmm. so uh, again, I until we get a response back, and I guess until we hear from... Uh, Mr. Weishar, we <laughs> we sit on this issue for now. They um, this is another development that's not to me. I guess I look at this as uh, somewhat in between arbors and past stone in terms of structures. You know, Arbors is a ton of individual smaller structures. Past stones, two giant buildings, and this is kind of an in-between thing. Um, I think that uh, one message that I do want to go out from tonight is that uh, they should really figure out a way to get another three percent of uh, commercial space to get up above the 20 percent I believe we conveyed that to them at the uh, hearing two weeks ago we did it was not in the uh, wasn't written down in the tabling resolution so that's something that I'd like to um, and 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 there again there's another issue with respect to the phrasing of the language in the manual. But I think this one is more clear because this one is specifically referenced, it's called out in the code, and then it cross-references to this table. Okay. So uh, this one is more clear that it's a requirement. And you're still gonna give the planning board a memo to the Yes, I am, something. yeah. Okay. But it's just, to me, as I look at them kind of preliminarily, it's specifically called out in paragraph D, the minimum number of uses, and it, it refers back to table 6.1, and it's a, you know, 20% minimum. It's actually table 6.1.5. Well, it's actually table 6.1. <laughs> it's, it's also 
Section 6.1.5. It's very confusing. Yeah. Oh, we're splitting hairs here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What other things can we discuss on this? Well, the, one of the other project. things that we did kick around two weeks ago was um, with respect to the common areas and the community room and the pool and and access to the residents and access to the tenants, access by the public at large, mm -hmm. um, and kind of how that was all going to work. And we gave them some direction on defining for us what their plan is for those common area amenities. Um, they did address that in a response. I, I, I'm gonna get that to you guys here shortly. Like I said, we got about four o'clock today, but they did address it they they addressed what they their proposed or their intentions are for the community building that it would be for residents first and commercial users on site first and they would have highest priority but they would look to potentially open it up for rental to whatever development comes near or around them um, in the future so i that's something that i think we need to to come to a consensus on. If every mixed use development has a community center, let's just call it a community center, and it becomes a revenue generator for the developer so that they come in and they tell the town, well, this is, a, this is an amenity that we're building for the residents and the tenants, and you know, look at this beautiful building, um, but they're out there pounding the pavement trying to rent that out for bar mitzvahs and weddings and mm -hmm. graduation parties and what have you. And then at all of the critical times that people who live and work in the community might want to use it, it's no longer available to them because it's being rented to an outside party. Then are they really meeting what we intended them to meet? As a community center? You know, I, I, you know, maybe that's a bad example, but just as a, you know, as as an amenity, you know. Um, I don't so. think we can dictate that to them, can we? I, I think that's a good point. I, I, you know, I would surmise that over time, if you decide you're going to move into uh, development and they sell this as one of the options and it becomes something that you can never seem to use because it's always being rented out to some outside entity then that's a um you know you might move yeah. you know i mean it's it's a um I don't know why I'm thinking about timeshares, but you know, you buy a timeshare and all of a sudden you try to exchange it for another place and you can never get that place. <laughs> you know, so, Except but mixed with use timeshare, development, you can't ever sell it in your mixed use development was supposed to be kind of a cohesive little self contained village. And we say this all the time. Kind yeah. of like a PUD but without the the schools and the hospitals and you know those those other community features but you know there was this there was this uh at least what i perceive to be this uh this community it had a, it had an entrance it had an identity it had you know the town went way out of its way to create these regulations and to scrutinize the design and what it looks like and and to mix non-residential uses in there so that people could live there and work there and play there and and that there would be these recreational features and if those recreational features are not really going to be available to the residents um, and the tenants or maybe just the residents i'm not sure are they meeting the intent of the manual 
Maybe I'm maybe I'm looking at this wrong. You know, you tell me if I. But you want to. So you're kind of calling out. Another way of saying it is you're kind of calling out to make sure that the that the uh, the uses are they're cohesive and they integrate so that it's truly mixed use instead of multiple uses, right? So that's that's, that's what you're trying to make sure there's it. some synergy. Well, you know, between you know, the uses. I guess you could you could say that uh, maybe a percentage of the time. Or something like that. It needs to be reserved for uh, residents. And that Terry's probably right. That's probably not something that we could, re or even anything that the town would want to regulate, because now you become an enforcement agency, and you don't want to do that. Yeah, I mean, if I, you try to rent out the <coughs> town hall, my lodge. Yeah, town my lodge. You know, you know, it's like whoever gets there first, yeah, man, there, rents there. it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But maybe what you want to do is you want to ask them how, like, to explain how are they going to meet the um, intent of the district that the uses be synergistic or uh, there's some phraseology. Yeah, and, you know, I, and I think we articulated that. I, well, I, I think we did articulate that. Yeah. And, and, and this, all of this came from an earlier meeting with this applicant where one of the people representing the developer came up and suggested that they were going to sell memberships, that, that the people, the residential tenants in the apartment buildings wouldn't have access to... Yeah, to a health club or something. Yeah, yeah. unless they paid a monthly fee. Right. And, and, and I'm not sure that that meets with the intent of... So you feel they didn't answer your questions adequately? Well, and that's why, and, and, and two weeks ago when we talked about that, the developer came up and he said, well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. And I, and I asked him politely, can you just please put it in writing? Because, you know, mm -hmm. everybody forgets what was said. So right. Did he? Well, yeah. Not, like yeah. he yes. Did. They, oh, they provided well, well, his concerns from last... Okay. Uh, yeah, he, we got he did provide. They did provide oh, okay. a response so within the, we'll the package. Take look at it and see if it answers your questions, and we'll address right. it next time. If they don't, right? I, I don't think we can really do anything. I don't know, Peter probably, but we'll we'll see what they say. I think a lot of the concern with the community center. So I. I don't necessarily think it's going to be an issue where they're going to try to rent it out, um, and. Well, let's see what you know, this, it's, let's, I'd like yeah. to see what they say because I think yeah. I think a lot of guess all coming night. off yeah. of our yeah. previous discussions with the previous application, I think they went back and forth between it'll be exclusively for the residents and it will be available for membership. And I think they were, I think they said both things because they were trying to utilize the community center for for multiple aspects. They were trying to say this is non-residential, it's not an apartment amenity, so don't count it as residential space or as part of our residential use. Uh, you know, so we're going to rent it out. But on the other side, they're saying, no, this is a private amenity space. It's really designed for the residents and for the use of the residents. So I think they were, I think the issue came out as they said, I think they said even multiple times that it was either going to be exclusively private or it was going to be available through membership to so they could utilize that space as part of their percentage calculations looking at residential and non-residential. And where they were low on their commercial, they were they, they wanted to boost the commercial by saying, yes, we'll sell a membership for this, regardless of you know potentially whether that was something they were looking to actually do long term. So just for the bigger picture of this discussion, we have other applications mm -hmm. before us that have multiple recreational facilities. And so one of the questions is, are they permitted to reserve one or more of those <clears throat> recreational facilities exclusively for the people who pay to live and work in the community? Or do they have to allow the public, the public to mm -hmm. come in and overtake it? So, you know, that's another question because I'm not sure that, that this is that defines that at all. <clears throat> you potentially could look at that like a private road. You know, you drive around Denver and there's a great highway 
cost you a freaking fortune to drive on it, but you have to pay to drive on it as uh, a member of the public. Um, I, I don't personally, I'm leaning more toward it is okay for somebody to come in to have a development that has a number of different uses in the development and uh, have amenities for people who live in the development. I agree with you 100%. What I, what I would love to have is somebody clarify that for the board so that as we advance these mixed-use developments, we can check that off the list and know that what the applicant is proposing is appropriate. Right. You yeah. Know, I keep thinking about the other development that we discussed that has garbage totes that are out facing yeah. the road uh -huh. in the morning. And going home after I saw that on my way to the town hall and picking up my manual and seeing how that's not permitted. Right. And, and it's something that perhaps we missed, you know, perhaps we failed to, to really hold their feet to the fire to that, to that part of the regulation. Right. So, you know. And that's uh, part of the reason why we're having what pre probably should be exhaustive discussions about the Some of these things, yeah. Yeah, agreed. Okay. Anything else on this that we need to uh, or can discuss really tonight? Without we don't owe them a tabling resolution or anything, right? Uh, I mean, if there if there is some information you wanted to convey to them, and certainly something like that, uh, you know, AJ's uh, I think that the if we put a tabling resolution that uh, potentially mentions some of the uh, architectural features. Um, that we discussed because I, we don't know. I mean, we're at this point, we're not really 100% certain of what. You know, I, I would prefer to wait until we get, um, you know, Chris's comments. Mm -hmm. I mean, All right. You could do a ba just a basic tabling resolution. You know, we're continue we're, to on, say we're that. on the verge of getting that, a response from the yes. applicant on so, some of yeah. the architectural questions we had. Yeah. All right, so then let's just, the rest of them are just continue tabling it uh, for ongoing uh, pending, review. Pending review sure. and you, know, you need a motion for that. Yeah. Uh, yes. I move that we continue to table this application. I have a second. I will second. Okay. Lori? Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Burton? Burton, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Tidings? Tidings, aye. Okay. So, any other topics we need to discuss? So, the one last thing I want to bring up with you guys is since May of 2020, we have had uh, 85 Sovereign Drive as a held <coughs> application. They initially asked it to be held because uh, they were uh, pausing a lot of the engineering work that they were looking to do um, for the COVID pandemic. Um, we have, staff has been contacted by multiple real estate agents saying that the property is now listed for sale and it appears that the project is not moving forward. Um, so staff is interested to see if the board would like to send a letter yes. telling them to yeah. decide. I'll, I'll make the motion to send a letter. Well, I'll sign. Tidings. Okay. Now. Yeah. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Burton. I abstain. Knauer. Aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. That's right, it was a TY Lynn application. No, no, it wasn't. No. No. It was well, I have a I have a no. relationship with the uh, owner. Got it. Okay. All right, that's all I had for you guys tonight. Good. Okay. Well, everybody thanks for uh, 
getting into the weeds well, here. I gotta say, I gotta like what you've done market. with the place. It's much uh, I like it. <laughs> yeah. it, it definitely well, yeah, it works. works. We can get some uh, area rugs out here, maybe a yep. couple of lamps. <laughs> It'd be yep. nice. Low so, lights. Do you know yeah. Ed Geska? Or, okay. All right. With that, we will adjourn. He's in Thanks, everybody. North Carolina now. <laughs>